good afternoon, and thank you for joining this episode of Transwestern Talks. Joining us today are Samantha Fisher and Catherine Blatchley. They will help us navigate a client's journey as companies consider reopening offices while facing the many unknowns. We will take Q&A after the presentation, so be sure to ask your questions in the Q&A section of the chat. The Q&A icon can be found in the upper right-hand corner of your screen. Sam? Hi, thanks, Kim. Thanks for the great introduction. Can everyone hear me okay? I take it? Um, I'm excited to be with the team today. Uh, Catherine and I have obviously been doing a lot of work um, in this space, and so we're excited to share the journey with everyone today. Um, I thought we'd start with a couple of quick introductions. I know um, not everyone has met all of us, so um, I'm Sam Fisher. I joined the company about four months ago, right in the midst of COVID, um, and it's been really a pleasure getting to know everyone, talking with folks, um, spending time with our clients, understanding what's going on in their space. Um, I come from the end user side, so I spent um, the majority of my career in corporate real estate, uh, so having those conversations with them has been really good and I'm excited to be here at Transwestern and lead our workplace strategy team and talk about it from an ecosystem and think about it from a perspective of what are all the parts and pieces that go into it that help our clients think about what does the workplace do and how do you build a high performing workplace to empower high performing teams. Um, so with that, I'd like to turn it over to Catherine and uh, we'll go from there. Hi everyone, um, my name is Catherine Blatchley and I oversee the marketing um, an area for Occupier Solutions. I've uh, been with the company about a year now and majority of my career has been in uh, commercial real estate, specifically more around the retail uh, aspect, tenant aspect, most recently with CBRE helping them with their advisory and transactions services. So. Um, what I've been doing is helping Sam translate the workplace um, journey into how we can use it as marketing and business development tools for our brokers and teams um, to win more business during this very un unconventional time. So we look forward to giving you more information in this presentation. Great. Um, so I think today, you know, Catherine and I are really excited to share with you all the work that we've been doing so far. Obviously, we've already published some materials and our intent today is to really kind of walk through those materials today, share with you some insights um, and some of the things that we're seeing from our clients. You know, I think many people think because we on the real estate side have been living in COVID and we really had a tactical response very early on to what was going on with COVID that the return to the workplace is a little bit dated. People think, haven't people figured that out by now? And the truth of the matter is people really haven't figured it out. And they haven't figured it out for a lot of reasons. Part of it is um, different states are in different phases of returning to the workplace. Different organizations are, in, are at different points of inflection and shift for their type of work style or their type of workplace. Um, and then obviously we have what's going on in the medical community and whether we're going to see you know, treatment programs or vaccines or anything like that. So while we've all been very heavily invested in this and it feels like we should be past this, if we're really not, um, we're kind of at an inflection point, a point where we're gonna turn the conversation from the tactics of keeping the buildings running, keeping the spaces open, what are the changes that we need to make to the furniture, um, what are the health and safety requirements to what's next on the horizon. And so our materials and the way that we've developed them really kind of address all of those different points and pieces. So today we're really going to talk about it from a tenant's perspective um, and our clients. And as we continue to have conversations with them and they come to us and are looking for advisory services, we really want to arm them with the right information to be able to answer some of those questions. So. Well, as soon as my little guy moves, there we go. Um, so. As probably most of you all know, if you're engaging with your clients, they're wrestling with so many quote unquote new normals right now. And we say it in that way because it's about, it's all these different parts and pieces are part of the ecosystem of a workplace, right? The health and safety that goes into it, which historically was more around, um, you know, what are the cleaning practices and things like that. Now they're, they're much bigger than that. They have a much bigger place in that conversation around sustainability and wellness, um, as well as just infection control and management. Um, design in terms of furniture and fixtures and what do things look like and are they cleanable or are they not cleanable? 
now we have this whole bigger conversation around legalities and privacy, which really goes to how do you maintain and manage uh, people that are coming into the spaces? How do you think about what happens to your employees? How do you make sure that if someone is sick that you're managing that appropriately? And then you have these other parts and pieces that are really around technology. We're all <clears throat> leveraging that so deeply, heavily. In fact, I was just laughing with uh, Catherine and Kim um, earlier today. I was on a call and my kids were crashing my network because they were playing Fortnite. So while we all have this incredible technology at our hands that allows us to be uh, functional while we're not necessarily in the office. Um, sometimes it doesn't always mean we're productive or we have these other things that we're having to address. Um, and our clients, when they think about their workplace and their employees are also thinking about all of these things as well. What are the impediments or what are the things that could cause their employees to not be able to deliver innovation or not be able to deliver new product development? And under that entire umbrella, when you think about employees or people, is really the culture of the organization. And so we know that culture really stems from having people together to build something that is ubiquitous and that bridges different diversities and brings people together. And that's hard when you're not working together. So while our clients are thinking so much about all of these different things, we really want to help them get to a place where they can think about people in place in a different way. So relative to all of those different parts that we just discussed, the biggest challenges are really about people in place. And so just a couple of quick things, you know, remote working prior to COVID um, only accounted for 3.4% of the total U.S. workforce population, which is crazy if you think about it. There was like 5 million people working in the U.S. and only 3.4% of the population um, had remote working. And while we have a number of organizations that allow uh, remote working, only 7% are offered across an entire uh, workplace dynamic. So while you might be able to take a, a day here or a day there or work remotely here or there, it really hasn't been a practice that most organizations adopt adopted and more importantly embraced for their uh, their people. <clears throat> the second part of it is you have all these workplaces that were primarily designed around headquarters or dense people centers really to support collaboration, to support innovation, you know, um, casual collisions to make idea ideation happen. Um, and those in a space of a safety are probably not going to be something that we talk a whole lot about going forward. So when we think about this client's journey and what is the materials that we need to help them navigate through and think about, it's really boils down to two questions. What are we gonna do with our people? And what are we gonna do with our workplace? And those two things kind of are intertwined in a couple of different places. One, are you going to have a workplace and what is it gonna look like and where is it gonna be? Is it gonna be in the suburbs? Is it gonna be in the city? You know, what are the requirements of the buildings, um, you know, for all of our asset team members? that are really working hard on that. What are the, how does the building continue to engage? How does the building provide space and safety for our, for clients and tenants and people? And then on the flip side, from the people side, it's how do we keep the culture going? How do we keep innovation going? And are we gonna have a fully remote workforce? And what does that actually mean if we have a fully remote workforce? And do we have all of the tools and the processes and the policies in place to really support that? And do we think that that's the way that we want our culture and our organization to go? So as Catherine and I have been building these materials and thinking through them, this is sort of where we landed. And we've landed in a place that's what are the resources that can help our clients navigate that return to the workplace? And I'm going to turn it over to Catherine to talk a little bit more about these parts and pieces. Yeah, so what's been interesting um, from the, the tenant rep perspective as you all that are very active in that space is um, you're getting calls from clients that are, you know, they're, as Sam was talking about, there's, they have so much going on and there's so many ways that we can help them, but how we really help them is by getting very focused on things around their workplace, their, their leases, their building, um, how they're talking to their landlords and, and thing, et cetera. So um, one of the things we can really be for our clients right now is just advocates and help them listen and listen and learn to them, have conversations, get, get very specific um, when you hear them talking about, well, I really think that I need to you know, go in this direction and have fully remote workforce, that, that's fine. That may be a decision that they have made, but we can help 
kind of unpack that and think about it a little bit more with them um, by asking you know just really pointed questions. What are you trying to solve? Where um, you know how has COVID impacted your future plans and you know all of those areas? There's so much that you could just kind of poke a little bit. And on the other hand, we while some clients have already returned back to the workplace, we have a lot that haven't. Um, a lot of the tenants um, that we work with, we're hearing 2021 for them to actually show back up full, probably at least at 75% capacity. So these documents that were created um, by our teams, there's three versions of them and there's a lot more to come on these. But one is if you have a client that is coming to you and they, they need just some help on a long term strategy, they've got there's a short, a medium, and a long phase approach. Um, our first piece, the providing purpose for people, place, and partners is that. It's, it helps them talk to their trusted advisors and create something that is best for them. We can't be the ones writing all of their program for them, but we can help advise it. Um, our other is if you wanna see what we have done from the Transwestern standpoint to help our clients and give them an example, a lot of our companies are wanting to say, Hey, what else? What are people doing? No one's done this before. So I want to learn and see what others are doing. Our sample framework shows how we from an executive level really got into that and analyzed it. And then the sample employee guide is also from our perspective of how we communicated with our people and we're bringing them back and it lets companies see some sample deliverables and ideas like floor plans or um, signage placements, things like that. So these are really very um, in-depth pieces for you all to use. But there's also a new path coming forward and it's around how to have, um, how to open a conversation with a, a tenant that you may not have talked to before. Um, we all have kind of a level playing set amongst all of our competition. This is all brand new. Everyone's having to figure this out. Um, some ideas that have popped up is, um, Looking at one of our brokers has looked at recent real estate transactions. For example, they looked at a, a, a client that they thought was really interesting and said, hey, they have an innovation space that they just um, opened in October. It's 55,000 square feet. It's about $65 a foot. And now this is hit. What are they doing with it? They sent an email to a friend of a friend who introduced them to the campus planning of this major corporation. And they were able to just have a conversation and, and learn and take it more of just how's it going? What does that look like? What, what can we help you with? What can we learn from it? So that was an interesting way to get in the door. Um, and then we were able to showcase these materials and say, hey, by the way, this is what we did. Thanks for sharing your information. Here's, here's some more information. Um, another uh, person has looked at the different subleases in their markets to see how long the tenant put them on there and if that is something that would be you know if it's been more than a, you know a month or two they are reaching out to those tenants and saying hey is this something that you really need help with are you really needing to you know get rid of your space can we help have more of a conversation and advise you on different ways to use it or ways to help you restructure or um, reposition what you're doing as a company and they've had some su success with that. Um, another is just coming back and saying, hey, you know, how is your how is your space functioning now? You know, there's a lot to think about and a lot of changes going on. What what does that look like and how do we help that? So the journey for our clients is so confusing. And if we can just ask some thoughtful questions and then come back and talk to Sam or myself and say, hey, we have a client that has um, these issues. What do we have to help them? Because in addition to what Sam and I have, there's an entire return to workforce task force going on that the asset services is led by um, Katie Saycash and Brett Williams. And then we have the agency side led by Sarah Maffey. And there's all these great resources and tools internal to this company to help our clients in so many different ways. And so, um, one of the things I wanted to just leave you with is um, where to find some of these materials. And um, this, we have an area on 
um, the corporate website. It lives under news and insights. It's called insights. And if you go there, you'll find a plethora of information around the back to workplace materials. And again, if you have questions about how to use them or when to use them, or if you have clients calling you and asking questions, you know, let us know, let us find ways to help you and have conversations and be creative and thoughtful during this time. Yeah, I think, you know, we've talked about, and it was pretty quick, where we've run through a, a few things so that we have time for question and answer. But I, I think the biggest takeaway for most of this stuff is, and Catherine alluded to it, which is we're all starting from the same spot. Um, and there is no magic bullet. There's no, um, you know, special tonic or potion that anybody has right now that knows the answer. Um, and it's going to require a different conversation and a lot of partnership uh, to help them understand those. And as we build the library of materials that helps us understand, you know, this type of client went this way and this type of client went a different way. Um, and we have that then at our fingertips that becomes a, a, re, a valuable resource for conversations. But I would say to Catherine's point, I was lucky enough to sit in on the conversation with the client who had the innovation center. Um, and this client shared with us, hey, I had a 10 year real estate strategy plan and I was working towards it. I'm in year, I was in year five um, and we were set basically on cruise control for the next five years and I knew what I was doing. And now I have to rebuild an entire real estate plan. That is a daunting task for anyone. I don't, I don't care who you are. Um, and so you find, we find ourselves in a different situation of being able to partner with uh, organizations and companies that maybe we had not had opportunities with before because they're really looking at their real estate in a different way. Um, and our job, or at least my job, is to help them think about their real estate as not just something that is overhead or that costs money, but is something that helps them build really incredible great teams that build really incredible great products for clients and customers. So. And our, our tenants, our tenant clients right now are, um, I mean, like I said, they're, they're all over the board on what they're needing of um, sometimes they just need a sounding board to make sure what they're doing to help their employees go back just to get back to business and, pro and productive is good. Others um, are already, they have to make a decision. They have to analyze their lease and their space and they, you know, maybe they don't have the ability to push out a renewal or push out uh, their new space. They have to move. So. Um, it's a gamut right now of what we can do and help with them. And but the the point is that we want to be really thoughtful for them because um, it, it's it's a hard time. It's a hard time for everyone. And from the building perspective, we're not hearing so much from the tenants in terms of demanding of the buildings what they're expecting, but they are expecting the buildings to have an answer and have a fast answer when they do have concerns. Uh, especially around cleaning and the protocols around how the building will operate. Uh, from the agency side, they're looking at it from, hey, how do I tour my space? How do I make a decision with a building that I may not be able to get to to see? Uh, we sat in on a, we had a pitch to a major client recently who just had a whole conversation around just the culture and how they think that you know, nothing's broken during this time, so they're going to change their entire real estate strategy. And one of the things we'd like to do is have them just take a take a step back and think about, think through how this process works. It's a very expensive investment and no one has the right answer for it right now. So um, what we wanted to come out of this meeting is one, let you know where the clients are from the tenant side. And two, we have all these great materials uh, that can be used as lead gen or just open a conversation for you. So with that, um, like I said, we've, we've done this very fast. Our materials are really in depth, so we do welcome conversations. And I'm gonna say, you know, let's see what questions you all have because Sam and I are so knee deep in this that sometimes we, you know, miss the, the obvious need. So does anyone have any questions for us?
It's quiet. Is it because it's Wednesday? <laughs> Um, I'm getting a note, Kim, that the webinar is not allowing us to ask for people to type questions. Um, I do see one question here. It says, are we charging for these services? It's like my favorite question. Seriously, you guys can't see my face. Which is good. <laughs> um, we are working through what that looks like. So the the answer to that right now is um, for consulting and conversation and working with the broker, the broker teams, um, myself know uh, <clears throat> what that looks like, you know, in the coming weeks and months. I don't know. But the answer to that candidly right now is no. However, um, what we are doing and what Catherine is helping me uh, as well as the leadership is helping me do is really think about, you know, how do we provide education and how do we provide materials to help it be um, easy to access for the um, you know the brokerage community to understand what parts and pieces are available what parts and pieces make sense to use um, because there is uh, uh, there is a bandwidth constraint and so while we're working through that and we're figuring out what that looks like uh, and it obviously covid put more uh, constraints on it than we had anticipated or actually put more need on it than we had anticipated um, we're really focused on what are the right tools to build um, and then having the appropriate conversation. So our goal is really to arm all of our teams with the ability to have a conversation um, and kind of start to figure out what are the right things and what are the right parts and pieces that we need. And then if we get to the point that we're um, pitching business to the client, we can work through what that looks like. Um, I don't know if that answers it, but it's um, it's a muddy as you can probably imagine. So that's the clearest that's the clearest answer we can give right now. Hey, that's if that's the answer, that's the answer. Uh, we do have another question about the location of the three booklets. Those are on if you go to transwestern.com and then on the right hand side under news and insights in the navigation, you click insights under there and then on the back to the workplace tab, you'll find those in the occupier solutions section. And uh, for the person who asked that question, I'll also send you a link. For those of you that have not browsed that section, there's also the rest of the materials that Catherine spoke about. So anything that has been published by Katie Saycash and Brett on the asset services is there, as well as anything that Sarah Matthew has published for um, agency is in there as well. So it's a one stop shop for you to find everything around back to the workplace, whether across the three different um, business lines. OK, we do have a couple more questions. Um, so some tenants now are waiting out a second wave given certain states reopening too soon. Is there anything a tenant can do to their space in the short run that makes cost effective sense? For instance, spacing out people, oh, spacing out people, of course. Yeah, there is, um, and I think it's a balance between what are you making a financial capital investment in versus what is an operational change. And if um, in our uh, providing purpose uh, for people, place and partners, we talked a little bit about that, and that's what we talk about in phase one, because we expect that there will be some stops and starts in this. Um, so we talk much more about operational changes and behavioral changes that you can do, whether that's staggered work, uh, uh, work times, which obviously we've done for Transwestern. Um, there might be some temporary furniture adjustments that you make, um, but I would say even on that space, you know, the level of investment um, for it is should be minimal, right? So what do you, and don't go out and buy all new furniture. I wouldn't necessarily advise going out and buying all new stackers for furniture if you're in a, a you know, a height adjustable desk, um, leverage existing spaces that maybe you're not using today, convert conference room spaces, um, do staggered scheduling. Uh, there's, you know, lots of other ways that you can um, create health and safety within the workplace um, for folks that don't necessarily, that to your point, are waiting out the second wave. My guess is, or, or what I've seen so far is, a lot of organizations are doing that. They're waiting until the beginning of 2021 uh, to do that. They're kind of seeing if there's gonna be a second wave um, and they're just maintaining their remote working, the remote working uh, ecosystem, which, saw, which creates its own opportunities and challenges as well. So that's why when we talk about it um, with our clients, 
making sure that they're thinking about it from a cultural perspective and what is the impacts to like their people leaders or performance management or how people are advancing in the organization and what the perceptions of those things are is just as important as the physical changes that they might be making to their workplace. And one of the um, uh, a friend shared with me that his company is doing two weeks on, two weeks off for a key market. So they're bringing a specific group of people into the office for two weeks and then they close it for two weeks. Um, they do have cleaning and quarantining and just testing the environment, make sure that this is how they want to take their um, their, you know, their space and what's happening with it. They're not doing it in the really hot uh, markets that have rebounded. They're saying um, more of the, the stabilized areas. So it really is um, just being more methodical and being very cautious as you're going back. Uh, we do have another question. Um, do we have any case studies of how different clients have approached returning to work? Um, the short answer to that is no, not yet. We have a number of clients that we've talked to, but we have not built the case studies for them. Um, one, initially, we were trying to figure out which clients we wanted to have those conversations with. Um, and then two, we were candidly in the thick of it, uh, like asset services and agency was as well, of making sure that we were providing the right information out to our clients. I think that's next on our list of things of, you know, as we've had continued conversations and we've talked to more and more clients around what are they actually doing, um, that will be next on our list to develop. Uh, any other questions? I'll give everybody another couple of seconds to get those in. Okay. Well, thank you, ladies. It was a pleasure. Thanks again, everyone, for joining us for this week's Transwestern Talks. Watch for an invitation for our next talk focused on tenant engagement, the pandemic version. Thank you and make it a great rest.